How's it going guys? I'm Julian Bradley from practiceroomhero.com. Got another jazz piano lesson for you. Today we're going to look at my top five favourite jazz piano endings of all time. I'm going to count down from five through to one. There's going to be some major key endings. I'm going to show you those in C major. Some minor key endings. I'm going to show you those in C minor. That way you can easily transpose them, get them to fit with any piece you're playing. And as per usual, I'm going to upload everything I play to practiceroomhero.com. Click on the link in the description box for the exact link, it'll take you there, you can print it out easily. So let's get straight to the lesson and I'll talk to you again on the other side. Okay, so straight in at number five. So this is a nice pattern I came up with. In the, in the left hand, we have a C major seven chord and then I alternate with a G flat major seven chord. I actually play the G flat major in second inversion, so I take these top notes, put them down an octave, and play it like this, simply because it means I don't have to jump around. So I'm alternating between C major and G flat major seven. And then in the right hand, I've just got this motif I came up with. It's basically a stack of fourths. But again, I'm moving the higher up notes down the octave, keeping it within an octave. But it really has that quartal harmony sound where you build things in fourths. And that, that motif conveniently ends on an F, which is the major seventh of the G flat major triad, the major seven chord. The F is actually the major seventh of that chord. and then I repeat the pattern in G flat major. So in G flat major you build it off the second again, because in the C major I built it off the second. And when I do that, the pattern conveniently ends on a B, which is the major seventh of the C major chord again. No coincidence, I wrote it that way so that it specifically ended on a chordal tone. And this is just, I don't know, sounds a bit like a bird. And there are loads of patterns I could do with this kind of idea. You know, I could do it coming down as well. But generally I find the endings are quite good to to go upwards across the keyboard and then introductions to pieces tend to come down if anything. You know, it's kind of a good introduction to pieces to come down. And now in at number four we have a minor key ending. So really I'm just arpeggiating a minor 6 chord, so you have the minor 3rd and the major 6th. It's a very nice dated sound, uh, you hear it a lot in block chord, harmony, and any, any piece that you're playing that has a dated feel to it, whether you're playing block chord voicings, you know that kind of film noir era. It's always going to sound great if you end it by arpeggiating a minor six chord. You don't have to, that's a very simple way to arpeggiate it, just going bottom note up. You could also come up with your own patterns though. So in this pattern, I'm not going straight up, I'm kind of alternating. also come up with other patterns, say we were in 3-4 if we were playing a waltz. That pattern is a six note pattern so it fits in the bar of a 3-4 phrase. 
George Gershwin's Summertime is one piece I always end with that minus six feel. And in at number three, we have another major key ending. Really, it's all about that ending chord. It's just a C major in the right hand. I've doubled it to make a bigger sound. But really, it's just a C major triad. And then I'm playing the flat two in the bass. So it has a quite an Eastern sound. And I'm just proceeding it with a 2-5-1. So we have a D half diminished. Then a G dominant 7 with a flat 9. And then really we're just ending with a C major chord, but I'm throwing things off by playing that flat 2 in the bass. And then I just ripple it up going through the different inversions of C major. So build it off the 3rd, off the 5th, off the 3rd, off the root, sorry. Off the 3rd, 5th up as high as you want to go. So I love that chord. In my opinion, that is the most intriguing chord of all time to end a piece on. Such a nice chord. And now we come to my second favourite ending of all time. It's another major scale ending. So this is a C major sharp 4. So it starts off outlining the C Lydian scale, it's basically C major with a sharp 4. Very bright mode, interesting sound. But then things get interesting, I introduce this 5 note pattern, which doesn't really fit in the scale of C, major, of C Lydian, because it has this C sharp. And really there there isn't theory behind this. When I composed it, I just found something that sounded good. But if you want to understand it, really I'm kind of playing more of a B minor kind of pattern. So it sounds more at home over a B minor. But I'm playing it over C, C in the bass. Really, once you've got those chordal tones in low down in the chord, so 1, 5, 3, 7, 1, 3, 5, 7, those are going to be the power of the chord, so these are always going to be dominant, but is always going to hear it as a C kind of chord, and then really you can do what you like up here. And you know, your ear's always going to hear it as a C major. So also, it's a five note pattern. So it's five notes. I always think the ending of pieces is a great time to kind of deconstruct everything that you've kind of created throughout the piece. So say it was in 4-4, four, four, you know, you can break down that timing. And here I've done a kind of set, set of five notes. Also, if you've spent the whole piece creating a sense of C major, that's the key, then you know you can get creative on the ending and kind of deconstruct that sense of tonality. You know, I'm playing C sharps and stuff. And then quite a common thing is with jazz piano endings is you'll play up through the keyboard and then it's kind of nice to just clear the pedal and just play a kind of crunched up, it's basically like a condensed form of everything you just played. Take take all the, those key notes that you played, all those colours, and just play them in this kind of crunch voicing, which is where you just really a load of seconds within the scale. So you've got a minor two, major two, major two, major two. And that's really just outlining the C. C Lydian scale, which which I, as I mentioned, this this thing kind of sounds like. And 
that's quite a common thing to do. You could also go back to my last ending and do something like that. What was it? You know, just play a chord that sums up everything you just played. And now we get to number one, which is my all-time favourite ending. It's a C minor ending. So the interesting part of this, I mean it's very lounge piano style. Basically we're in C minor, we come up to the 5 chord, and then we play a G altered 7 chord. You could also think of it as a kind of a G dominant 7 with a sharp 5, you've got this kind of augmented sound. G7 with a sharp 5. It's all about playing in your own time, and then you can just end it how you want, but I've gone with this. Just going up. Just arpeggiating the chord with a kind of pattern. So that is a really nice ending. So if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments box below the video which of the endings was your personal favourite. And if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you just click the thumbs up button in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. If this is the first video of mine you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. There's currently over three hours of jazz piano lessons and I post new videos every week. So thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Have you had enough of playing overly simplified jazz pieces like this one? Do you want to play what the professional jazz musicians actually play? Well now you can with Julian Bradley's Jazz Hero eBook series, which sets a new standard in jazz piano music. From bebop to blues, lounge piano to Latin styles, each book features a different piano composition and comes packed with the following. A detailed full score, clearly transcribing the melody, chord voicings, bass lines, dynamics, articulation and pedal markings. I've even included one of my own jazz improvisations, fully notated for you to play, which is something you won't find elsewhere. A chord sheet, complete with my own suggestions for scales to use. And bring your playing to life with my accompanying MP3 audio tracks. Now you can perform to a live rhythm section recording and master improvisation the smart way. So take advantage of my introductory offer on Dancing With You, which is the first ebook in the series, discounted at jazzherobooks.com. Experience a new standard of jazz book and take your playing to a whole new level today.